Let's see if I remember how to do that. Everyone, welcome back to the Pim Pin Podcast. Uh, my name is Megan Nodecker, and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And it's been a very long time. Um, so if you don't know who I am, or if you this is your first time watching the podcast, thank you so much for joining us. And if you are a returning viewer, uh, thanks so much for, for coming back after my very, very long absence. <laughs> Um, you can find me a couple places on the interwebs. Um, I am Pip and Pin on Instagram and Knit Pip and Pin on Ravelry. And then we also have the Pip and Pin group, which is on Ravelry. And that's where you'll find all of our, all of my test knitting stuff and giveaway stuff if it's happening and the knit along things if things are going on. Usually all that kind of stuff is in the Ravelry group. So you should go check that out for sure. Um, yeah, it's September 12th, it's episode 34, <laughs> and I think it's been about three months or something since my last episode. Um, I did decide to take the summer off, which, not from everything, but just from podcasting, um, because with, it was, uh, it was George's last summer as a, you know, as a non-school kid, so we did lots of fun things, and... I just didn't want to feel guilty about not podcasting, <laughs> so I just decided to like have a set time where I didn't do it. So, so now I'm back because George is in school. Yeah, she went to school this week. <laughs> she's in school right now. It's really weird. Um, she's in. She's five, and here in BC, I don't know if that's how it works everywhere in BC, but where I live. Um, they do like a graduated entry into kindergarten. So last week she had a day where it was like me and Justin went with her um, for an hour and then she did kind of an hour by herself and and the first couple of days was really just finding out like placement and and where she was because there's two two full kindergarten classes in her school and then one kindergarten grade one split. Um, and then this week she went for like, just past reset, like from the morning until just past recess, and then Tuesday was morning until just after lunch, and then yesterday was her actual like first full on day, eight thirty to two thirty. <laughs> um, I cleaned my house; it was great. <laughs> but anyway, long, long roundabout way of saying now I have more time to do podcast and more dedicated time so I can like have a set time during the week where I can be like okay this is my you know this is the morning that I film a, a thing I still don't know whether it's going to be a week or two I cut I really like the idea of doing it every week because right now I'm looking at all the things that I have to talk about and it's very overwhelming it took a lot for me to even like start filming this because it's just so much um so I probably won't even get through everything today. I have, yeah, I have all these things that I want to talk about. I'm probably not going to talk about all of them. So I really like the once a week format where I can like film for 20 minutes, half an hour. And then, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like too much. It doesn't feel like a whole day of, of doing things. Anyways, if you're still with me, I wanted to do something fun for the first episode back. Uh, so... I have a giveaway that I'm doing and I've been collecting giveaway prizes for a while and some of them have been gifted to me like for giveaways and some I've just seen and thought oh that would be really cute for a giveaway um, so I have a little collection and I haven't been doing any knit alongs or anything recently so let's do a giveaway <laughs> um, this one is going to be for a couple different things let um, me get myself all sorted here it's gonna be a little package that I put together. So the first thing is um, this little guy. And this is just a little um, porcelain dish and it's a little cat. So for stitch markers or whatever, I have one, um, one of my fiber share partners, when I did that last fall, she got me this beautiful little like pottery 
just handmade something little tray and I use it for everything I use it for my stitch markers and I have needles in there and it's always full of junk but like very useful to have so I saw this at um, Spruce Collective in Abbotsford and I thought it was super cute George is very sad that I'm giving it away <laughs> but so there's that um, there's also this set of these are my favorite um, bulb like lockable stitch markers they're just like little safety pins and this is a set of 20. Can you see them there? There we go. A set of 20 in um, the rose gold colorway. So those are they go together. See? <laughs> the third thing, now this is something that is totally not related to knitting at all, but um, I have one of these and I really like it. And I saw this. There was like this cooking store that was closing or something. And so I everything was was i don't know there were just really good deals and even though i didn't need another one i thought maybe one of you would like one so <laughs> this is from x and o paper goods and it's actually a it's not just a box i'll open it up for you it's a little light up marquee sign so just pull it out here it's like a mini one of these guys. And so it has all the different letters that you can put in here and some different shapes and things. And the letters are sparkle. I don't know if you can see how sparkly they are, but they are very sparkly letters. Um, yeah, so that is a part of it. I don't, I just thought it was cute and that somebody might like it. <laughs> so that will be in the prize. And then, I'll do that later. Okay. Uh, and you'll also get these guys. And these are two skeins of Ancient Arts Nettle Soft DK in the Roaring Twenties colorway. And this might look a little familiar because this is the same yarn that I used to design the Persica sweater last summer. Uh, and this is a really really interesting yarn. It's the first time that I've ever worked with nettle yarn and it's um, is it 68% super wash fine merino and then 32% nettle. Um, and nettle is very similar to like a linen. Um, so it's a plant plant based fiber and it has that same sort of drapey like silky almost um, it's not crunchy at all. It's really soft and um, just not quite as warm and not quite as like heavy almost as um, as just a straight wool yarn. Really, really cool stuff. If you ever get a chance to um, see some of this in person, I think they have DK and they also have it in fingering. Um, very, very cool yarn. So two skeins of that, it would be perfect for like a, I don't know, some sort of cowl or something. Uh, or a scarf or a whatever, or a shawl, whatever, whatever you want to make. So to enter to win these four prizes, um, all you have to do is in the comments below on YouTube here, just tell me what your favorite thing about last summer was. Something you did or something you ate or just staying at home or a vacation you took, anything. Whatever your favorite thing about this summer was, let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to pick a winner right before my next podcast so either a week or two whatever i decide i'm gonna be doing um and i'll let you know who the the prize winner is <laughs> um before i get really into knitting there are a couple things that i want to talk about because there are some really exciting events and things that are coming up so i want to um talk about those for a little bit first if you're not interested in any of that stuff um I'll put a timestamp in the or in the description box below so that you can skip to where I actually start talking about anything because <laughs> there there are a couple of things it might maybe it'll be a couple minutes. <laughs> so the first thing is that uh, starting on September twenty third is um, eighty eight stitches is hosting a pip and pin knit along. And that's going to be from September 23rd until November 9th, so the very first day of fall until um, the 9th of November. And there's going to be two categories, um, so 
two separate um, prize packages. I don't know exactly how they're gonna how they're gonna do that quite yet. I don't think they do either. Um, so one for accessories and then one for like sweaters and garments and things. Um, if you you can use stash yarn as long as it was bought from 88 Stitches or Sweet Fiber. And if you are wanting to purchase new yarn, you can um, go to 88 Stitches and you'll get a 10% discount if you're buying yarn for a project for this knit along. Um, there's no works in progress allowed, so hold off on casting anything on until the 23rd of September. And if you go to 88 Stitches um, the Ravelry group, there's a thread there that has all the information and all the rules and things like that. So that's gonna be very exciting. I might even participate because I need a new hat. <laughs> I don't think I'll win any prizes, but that would be weird. Um, so yeah, and it ends on November 9th and it's there's gonna be a, like a wrap up thing on the 9th because I'm actually having a trunk show at 88 Stitches. So from 11 to, I'll be there from 11 to four and I'll have my books and patterns and some new books and some new patterns. So you can come there and show off your, your Pip and Pin knit along uh, things. And I'll have more information about, about these things as, as they come, but I just wanna mention it if you, if you wanna put it on your calendar. <laughs> um, I'll also be at Knit City again this year. Um, that's in Vancouver, it's at the p and &E Forum on October 4th to 5th. And that's the big, the big knitting deal on the West Coast here. <laughs> Uh, we go every year. We've been, we've actually been to Knit City every single year that it's been a thing, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, Katie's also gonna be there. She is flying in from Hawaii, um, so that's very exciting. Um, so we're gonna be staying at the atrium, so if you're staying at the atrium too, I'll probably see you around. <laughs> and um, I'm also gonna be at the Knit Night at the, oh, where is it? It's at the Waldorf. Um, on a, the third. So on the Thursday night, I'll be at the knit night there. Yeah, I think that's gonna be really fun. <laughs> I'm not doing any of the other events um, this time. Uh, I used some past couple of years, I've been to the lecture on the Friday night and it, like, I really like going to the lectures. I've, I found um, both of them very interesting. I saw the Stephen West one and then the um, Hohi and Vera one last year. And I really liked both of them, but setup is on Friday. <laughs> and um, it's always just a big, like, it's kind of rushing. Like, so we, I'll probably drive out on Thursday night with all our stuff and then do the knit night. And then I have to go pick Katie up at the airport Friday morning and then we have to set up. And it's just gonna be a long day. <laughs> so I'll probably just be, catching up and hanging out with Katie instead um, after we after we do our setup and stuff. And last year I had to like finish setting up and then go quickly eat something and then I got there late and it was just it was just a whole thing and I just rather I just rather not. <laughs> um one more thing I think yeah I'm gonna talk about this now I think um is I if you seen some pictures follow me on instagram that i showed some pictures of um the pink in, the pink striped shawl with the tassels um it's a new pattern that i've been working on it's not gonna be released anytime soon but um i did do uh, abby doll who's abby nets um, she did some photography for me and she actually reached out and asked um if she could take some pictures because she was working on a knitwear photography online I uh, like online classes kind of or like an online package so that actually um, you can go and purchase that now and what it is it's called photography for knitwear and you can find um, all the information at abbyknits.com I'll make sure I put a link to it down below and what that is is um, instruction for how to take photographs of like specifically of knitted items. So there's videos, um, I'm in one of the videos and 
that was that was fun and kind of awkward. I mean, <laughs> we were laughing because I, I mean, I film podcast videos all the time and it's not really a big deal, but I don't know. It was just weird. It was like uh, just in a different format. Like right now, I'm by myself and I'm talking to my phone, um, but having somewhere and actually like behind the camera and doing things. Um, it was really fun, and you can see some of the pictures on um, on Instagram or on her Instagram. I'll probably post another one later today or something. And um, yeah, you can see a little preview of what you get um, at Abby Nets. Com. It also comes with, um, like there's, I think right now there's six or eight videos or something, and they're all different, um, kind of different categories of things. So I think mine was called fun and laughs and mixed lighting because <laughs> it was cloudy and sunny and uh, I laugh when I'm nervous. And then uh, there's another, there's just different, all different videos for different lighting types. And I think there was like cross lighting and a sunny one and um, one for actually like doing pictures of yourself, I think. And then there's also PDFs of just explaining the different photography techniques. And I don't even think it's necessarily geared towards people with professional cameras or DSLRs or anything like that. Like, I think you can, I'm very certain that you could get this course and then use whatever camera you have. Like iPhones and phone cameras are so great now that it's not unheard of to take, you can take really great photos with your phone. Um, and using some of these principles, it'll just make everything like look really great. Um, I'm very excited. I haven't even really had a chance to look at it yet, but I like I was really excited <laughs> when she, that she was doing this because Katie and I do our own photography, and um, you know we take 500 pictures of something and pick the best five, <laughs> and this way, you know, hopefully we'll be able to be more intentional with our with our photo shoots. I'm very excited to, to kind of dig into that. And as I get more into it, um, I'll, maybe I'll write some, some notes on that and, and I'll share some, some of my experiences and thoughts more about that when I actually get a chance to sit down and, and look at it and watch some of the videos. And man, watching the video of myself is gonna be real awkward. <laughs> she actually has a little preview you know what? Yes, she ha she does have a preview little video. I think it's just a minute long uh, that she made. I'm just gonna pop that right in, uh, right in here. So here's what it's about. <laughs> Guess it's time to talk about some knitting because <laughs> I've been doing a lot of it. I finished lots of things. I've started a few things. I'm not going to share all of it because that would take a really long time. And <laughs> some of it I can't show you anyways. There's there's one project in particular that I don't even have anymore. Um, and I'm not really allowed to, I'm not even allowed to, I couldn't have shown you while I was knitting it if I wanted to you'll find out about that much later. <laughs> so I, I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is a new sweater design that I'm working on for actually for next year. So it won't, it won't be a, a pattern until much later, sorry. <laughs> um, but it's 
knit using six and seven fiber in her soybean base, which is a, um, it's 100% non-superwash merino, which let me tell you, okay, I think you can probably see the colors. It looks, it seems to be showing up pretty accurately, um, accurately there, but it's um, reverse stockinette. The whole body is reverse stockinette stitch um, with some raglan, raglan shaping. Um, and then these little details at the cuffs and it's also at the hem. I'm not going to stand up, but it's also at the hem and it's got a little bit like it's not cropped. It's just a normal like super comfy, super comfy sweatshirt kind of feel. Um, but the non super wash yarn, it's not something that I've worked with a ton um, because everything is super wash. You know, it's it take, super wash takes dye like nobody's business. Um, and you can see from this, like this is a speckle that, um, but it just, it, it looks like a watercolor. All the colors kind of melt into each other and it's not like a variegated where it's, it's just so different. Um, so if you go, like she has many, many beautiful colors. This is the plumage colorway um, and the purple is a tonal, it's called violet, but it just, yeah, it's just like lighter and softer and um, very, I just really love it. And it's so soft, <laughs> like it's so soft. And it's not even, it's not even cold enough to wear a sweater yet. And I'm super mad about it, <laughs> but I'm doing it anyways, because it's just that comfy. Um, I'm also a little bit sad that we're not doing pictures right away because now I'm going to be weird about wearing it because I don't want to wreck it in case we have to do, well, we have to do pictures, so I can't wreck it. <laughs> not that I've ever wrecked a sweater before, but chances are if I'm going to wreck a sweater, it's going to be this one before we do the photo shoot. <laughs> um, what else can I say about it? I'll have more to say about it when it's actually closer to release and when we do the pictures and, and everything. This is, this is the first piece that is officially finished for the next book next year. <laughs> uh, so at the next one I'm gonna show you, and I was debating on whether where, to wear this one today or not, but I'll wear it next week. But this is another new sweater design. And this is called Cat Bells, and it is knit using uh, the fiber company Cumbria, um, which is a lovely, lovely woolly wool yarn, also very soft. It's going to be released on next Tuesday, so on September 17th, which also happens to be Justin and I's three-year anniversary. Um, this will be available for download on Ravelry. And so it is a all over textured um, pullover and it is has a bit of a, again, just like a comfy kind of sweatshirty everyday throw on wear everywhere kind of thing. <laughs> it has drop sleeves. So it's, yeah, just simple drop sleeves like that. Very, very comfy. And it is all oversized, so the sleeves are quite oversized, the body's quite oversized, but then in the at the hem and the sleeves, it is pulled in a little bit, so the cuffs, the cuffs and the hem are pulled in. So you get a little bit of blousing on um, on the sleeves, and then as well as the body, and the body is a little bit shorter. It's not quite. I hesitate to call it cropped because it's not quite cropped, but it's not like a long sweater either. It would hit just like. I wear high-waisted jeans and, and it hits right at the top of my jeans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very, very comfy. And this is just like an easy um, garter stitch lace uh, kind, of, kind of texture. And so it makes it very squishy and also very um, like breathable. Uh, I get really hot. <laughs> so having a sweater, a DK weight sweater with holes in it is always a good thing for me. Uh, and then I also, for this one, I'll show you the cuff there. But this was my first time doing a tubular bind off. 
And I did the one where you put, you actually do put it onto two needles and then um, like Kitchener it. That's the one that I did. And I, I don't know why I've never done it before. I think I tried it once and then got like too impatient with it and, and didn't like it and, or something. Um, like it just wasn't, it didn't seem like it was right right away. So I just gave up and, and <laughs> did something else, but it worked this time. And I really, really love how it looks. It just looks very, very finished, very polished. Um, so I did that for around the collar and the cuff and the hem. And I don't know if you ever saw the hem, but yeah, see, so you can see it pulls in a little bit. I'm gonna live in this thing. <laughs> the pattern is pretty much ready to go. I, it's been tech edited, it's been tested. I've had some really, really beautiful ones come out from testing that my testers have done. It's so beautiful. So I am gonna be sharing some of those for sure as, when it's released. Uh, you can also, I've also, because I'm doing this with the fiber company um, through their independent designer program and um, they're actually making kits for this sweater as well. So on the 17th, when it's released, if you uh, want to knit it in the same yarn or the same yarn in a different color, um, you can go, you can actually go to the fiber company website and buy the kit, which includes the yarn and the pattern, uh, and you get a 10% discount for, for that. Um, and I think there's a code. Ooh, I can't remember. I'll have to clarify things with, with Claire, but I, I will get all the information. Follow me on Instagram. That is the best way to get all of the, all of the info. I'll also be posting about it on the Ravelry group. Um, yeah. And then I also, um, I usually do a promotion for the first week. So keep your eyes open on Instagram for the promotion code. Um, and that's going to be 20% off the pattern for the first week. And yeah, very, very excited about this sweater. I've been in love with this yarn for a very long time. <laughs> like since I first started actually knitting, and I remember seeing it in a couple of years ago, one of my very first sweaters, my first yoked sweater for sure was the Agroterra um, sweater. And it was in a copy of Interweave, maybe 2016-ish. And anyways, it was, um, the sample of it was knit in the Fiber Company Cumbria in the Cat Bells colorway. And I just thought it was so beautiful, but I wasn't confident enough to wear anything other than gray. <laughs> um, so I did it in, in the dark gray, which I also really like. But I, I also used, oh, what did I use for that one? Some sort of cascade or something, or maybe even patents. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, no, it was Patton's Classic Wool in, in the dark gray because I, I was in a confident sweater knitter, so I didn't want to, to spend, you know, more than $40 on a sweater. So, <laughs> But now I've, I've been thinking about this yarn for years. For years I've wanted to make a sweater out of this yarn, and I'm so pleased with, with how this one turned out. I think it's going to get a lot of wear. Um, I'll wear it for you on the next, on the next episode for sure. Um, but I wanted to be able to like hold it up and show you everything this time. Um, 17th, you'll be able to get that pattern if you like it. <laughs> um, and then the last finished object that I'm going to show you today, I decided for three, three finished things and then three whips is good for today. <laughs> So this is my, I've been doing the sock bash, the grocery girl sock bash, which is where you knit a pair of socks um, each month, be like beginning to end within the month. And um, each month kind of has a theme. Sometimes I follow them, sometimes I don't. <laughs> um, but this one was, this pair of socks is for August. Let me just grab, sorry, blocker. 
And this is a pattern that I also made up. <laughs> and it is these guys here. This fun, stripey, slip stitchy, scrappy little pair of socks. <laughs> And um, yeah, all these yarns came from over the summer. I decided to, I kind of randomly just decided to start the Indie Mini Sock Swap, which is a swap that I host. And um, I'm kind of in the middle of the second round right now. So um, basically the premise was to send in a skein or two or however many of sock yarn that you like but just has never really been knit that you've never really knit with before for whatever reason like maybe it's the wrong color or maybe it was an online order and it just wasn't really what you were expecting or you know just something that's been sitting in your stash and you know that you're not going to use so you send that to me and i wind it up and into 20 gram mini skeins and then make sets out of those mini skeins and send them out so it's like a mystery you get you send in your your yarn that you're not going to use and then you get these five mystery mini skeins in return um it seemed to be well received <laughs> and i just i started another one um i started signups for another one they just closed um so unfortunately you, you can't get into this round but I will be doing it again. But let me show you, <laughs> let me show you. This is what I've been doing for the past week. This is the first box of mini skins that I've wound up. They're all tiny and labeled and awesome. Uh, I still have about six skins to wind into mini skins waiting for me. And I also, just missed a call from the postman. So <laughs> this round is about three times the size of the first one that I did. Um, I don't know why I did that right before Knit City, but it's so fun. Like, I don't know, I really, I'm really enjoying it. And you might be thinking winding so many minis is crazy and it kind of is, but it's also the kind of thing that I love doing. I love like busy work. So it's kind of a perfect fit for me. Anyways, this is a pair of that, that was, um, I just got a phone call. So that was that was the girl guides uh, telling telling me that Georgia has a spot in, in guide. So it's gonna be a little spark this year. It's exciting. <laughs> and they also were changing the location. So now I don't have to drive across town, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is the pair of socks that I knit with my mini skein set that I got from the first round. And the yarns in here, our um, this green one is Northbound Knitting MCN Twist in Floatsome. This um, or this orange, <laughs> this greeny speckly one that is Fawn and Fox Badger in Midnight Runner. This pink one is Prairie Dye Studio Anna's Sock in Indian Paintbrush, and then this goldy is seawall fibers um, quartz sock and i think this was the knit city 2018 colorway and then this um this beige with speckles is woolen boon boon classic in great balls of fire um yeah and this isn't a pattern yet but but <laughs> oh i'm so excited that george is gonna be able to, to go to Sparks. <laughs> that's exciting. Uh, and okay, so that's all the finished objects that I have to show you. And now I'm just going to do, I thought I was going to do three whips, but I think I'm just going to do two and I'll save the other ones for later. So the first one, I still have too much to talk about. <laughs> Okay, so I've been really working hard this summer to try and finish up some of my whips and to get kind of ahead of my design work a bit. So I've, there have been so many really wonderful patterns come out this summer and that, and now this fall as well, that I really want to knit. 
<laughs> and I told myself that I wasn't allowed to knit any of them. <laughs> so, except for one. So a couple weeks ago, uh, Justin and I drove up to Lumby, which is um, just past Vernon, and it's about a four hour drive. So I wanted something to knit on that drive that wasn't a design because if something went wrong, then I would need interest, not like went wrong, went wrong, but if like some numbers didn't work or something, like nothing was really in a place where I could just pick up and knit it. So I decided to start something new. And what I cast on was, oh, I should have put this on a longer cable, sorry guys. <laughs> but it's this guy. Ooh, I'll show you the pretty end. It's one of the ends. So this is, if you don't recognize it, this is the Courage Shawl by Shannon Cook. Um, and it, all these stripes are slip stitches. So it's beautiful, stripey, color worky kind of thing. And I'm using um, Sweet Fi, this was all stash yarn. So um, it was just stuff that I've had. And it's, um, the black is Madeline Tosh DK, something or other. And then the rest of it is all Sweet Fiber. So this is, the white is the Vintage Lace and Rose Gold and Ochre and a teeny bit of, uh, what's this, Sequoia. So yeah, I just had some some skeins kicking around that needed to be something for me. <laughs> and so I'm very excited. I am I just really love these colors together. I'm really excited to to actually wear this. And it's going to be it's going to be pretty big, I think. I I don't have any colored pictures to show you, but maybe I'll just put a picture in maybe. <laughs> um but yeah, so this was this was my car car knitting. Um, so this was about eight eight hours of knitting, I guess, if we were in the car for four. It's been really fun to work on. I think the original version, these color sections, um, they are. I think she is spin cycle yarns, which is like the they kind of gradiate into different colors and are really beautiful. Um, and I didn't have enough of one color to do it just three colors, so I did five colors. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do like pink. I have full skeins of the pink and the ochre, and then I have just a little bit of this um, sequoia left. But I think if I do like pink, ochre, pink, sequoia, pink, or like if I just do that pattern, then it should be fine. And then it will be like different sections different that are different colors too, because there's yeah, three sections, and then if I have four, my four color repeat. Anyways, I tried to do it random, and then it just was like, no, I can't do it random. Um, so when I I have one, I have one thing that I really want to get off, but two. Okay, so I have two things that I have to finish. <laughs> one is a sweater. I'm not going to show you. It's the blue cardigan. If you've watched before, I'm sure I showed it. I've started working on that again. I'm doing the collar for the third time, fourth time, third time. It's been many times with this collar. <laughs> if this next time doesn't work out, then I just don't know what I'm going to do. Figure something out, but I guess. Figure it out. Um... And then these guys uh, is something else that I'm working on. And it is a pair of just stripy, scrappy vanilla socks. So I usually cast on, I think this is 60 stitches on US ones. And then I had eight row or eight round um, stripes just of, I gathered all of my fall-ish type yarns, put them all, split them into two, and then put them in my bag. And this I am doing totally random. So I just, anytime I have to switch color, I'll just go in, in the bag, grab a color, find its match, and then knit it up. Um, the This is for the Grocery Girl Sock Bash again. And the theme for September was back to school 
inspired and it was um, a new to me technique. And the new technique that I'm doing is two at a time. So I've never knit socks two at a time before. I, I've always understood the concept of it and like how it should all work. Like that, that was never intimidating for me. I just never did it. <laughs> so I, a couple months ago even, I, I was at just randomly was at 88 stitches. So I was like, ah, oh, I should buy those needles so that I don't have to like scramble for them. And then I, um, yeah, finally, I finally did it. I am liking it so far, I think, but like, I like how, yeah, at the end of this, I think I'm right at the point where I put in my heel and then knit my toe and then, and then I'll have two socks and I won't have to do it. But I've never been one of those people where like I knit a sock and then I don't knit the other one. I've always knit the other one. Like I, I only usually only ever have one pair of socks on the needles at a time and that's what I work on until they're done. Um, but it's a new to me technique, so that's what I did. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna be my preferred, like I don't think I'm gonna switch. Usually I do magic loop just one at a time. Um, and I think that's probably how it's gonna stay. Not that this is bad and not that I'm not enjoying knitting them. I just, socks for me are the project that I bring with me places um, and do while I'm walking and like things like that. So I have my little thing and, and I, just knit 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 away when you're working two at a time that like I did it I was knitting yesterday when I was walking Georgia to school so I can do it but it's not as easy like I have to pay attention when I'm switching yarns when I'm switching socks and it's just not as like you know magic loop I can just do it without without thinking about it and this I have to like you have to physically do something else so it's not that it's not that it's hard it's just something to pay attention to and socks are the thing excuse me and socks are the thing that I don't like to pay attention to <laughs> if you know what I mean like they're they're the thing I want to be able to do in the dark I think that's all the knitting that I'm gonna share yeah that's all the knitting that I'm gonna share <laughs> um, I did I haven't bought much yarn. One great thing about doing this sock swap is that I get to see a lot of yarn and I've been getting to play with a lot of yarn um, and I don't necessarily have to buy it and it doesn't have to sit in my closet with the rest of my yarn. <laughs> so that's been really awesome about the swap for me is really just getting to see and play with all these other yarns without actually having to um, keep them. But I did buy some yarn this summer, just a little bit. I'm not a huge yarn hoarder, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> Hypothesis Yarns, who are um, a Canadian dyer, she's out in Newfoundland. I, she came out with a, earlier in the summer, she came out with a set, and not like a set, like a, a collection, that's what it's called. She came out with a collection of colors inspired by Wes Anderson movies. So, yeah, it was really hard to choose colors. Because <laughs> if you go and look at, they're all just very beautiful and all, um, like you look at them together and you you can tell, like it's it's Wes Anderson. What, like that's the, the one thing that I really love about Wes Anderson movies is the, like how it's shot and the colors that are used and and those types of things like they're good they're good movies but the film like the what it looks like the cin uh, cinematography that's what it's called that's what really gets me about about his movies uh so it was very difficult for me to decide what colors to get the first one was um the first one wasn't the first one was a no-brainer i saw a preview of it on instagram and then i knew i wanted it instantly um, I kind of want a sweater in this, even though I don't know if, if I could pull it off. <laughs> but this is um, Hypothesis Yarns. This is Merino DK. And it is uh, Zizu. So I'll see if Zizu is out. But like, could I do a sweater? I don't know. It's very like, I don't know if it's 
a color a red for me. Usually I go towards the like bluey reds, but I don't know. Does it matter? Do I love it? Yes. Um, and I also like thought that all the colors look so good together that I wanted to do something with a little bit of color work somewhere. So I, I got three other colors um, that I'm gonna just play with a little bit. And I'm very happy with my choices. Two, two are blue. <laughs> so there's this one, which is like a, like a muted, almost kind of green, but just a touch of it. Uh, it's not showing up quite right, but sorry. It's called Wildcat. Um, if you look on her Instagram or if you look on her Etsy shop, the colors, I found that some dyers do a really great job of their photography and sometimes it's just not quite represented the right way. Um, this entire collection, uh, there was no surprises. Um, so everything looked how it was supposed to look. So this is Wildcat. And then this is Royal and it's just a very, very pale, pale blue. Not like a baby blue or anything, um, just pale. And then this one was my kind of one that I added after and I was nervous about it, <laughs> but I shouldn't have been. Uh, this is Cavalier and it's, a, it's yellow. It's very bright yellow, but it is also like not neon yellow. It's, um, muted it's all all of it's muted all of it has that same kind of undertone Wes Anderson-y thing that he does <laughs> so these are them all together and they're like so these ones were the first uh, not those ones these ones were the first three that I picked out and then like yellow for a little bit of pop of something I have no idea what this is gonna be quite yet. Maybe I'll, hmm, I have strange brew. So maybe like, maybe we need matching family color work hats. This way. <laughs> I don't know how Justin would feel about that, but Georgia would think it was great. So maybe I'll do that <laughs> one day when I have time to knit for myself. Uh, that's pretty much, that's, that's all I bought. Um, oh, I did get some mohair a long time ago, like the beginning of summer. Sorry, some of it's up there. I did get some mohair kind of at the beginning of summer, but it's tucked away places, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dig it out today, but I'm sure you'll see it as I use it. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I can talk a little bit about, I wanted to add a little, a little, Thing to the end of my podcast because it's something that um, I know a lot of other people do and I don't know if I've I've never really had a section for it uh, where I just talk about life things <laughs> and I really enjoy it I think um, part of the the great thing about watching a podcast is actually getting to know the people that are um, doing it so yeah so I'm gonna have a little thing at the end of what life is like being Megan Nodecker. <laughs> Basically just what's going on in my life right now. So summer, there was summer. The big thing, the big life thing has been um, Georgia going back to school or back to school, Georgia going to school. Uh, she did do preschool last year, which was really, really good for her. Um, and she just started kindergarten. So this is her first week of kindergarten. Her second full day is today. I talked to her teacher yesterday and apparently she says she's like hilarious, which is true. George is a funny, funny kid, um, lots of energy and also has a bit of a temper. So I, yeah, she, I guess she was having a hard day yesterday. Um, but I, they, they did like a little, um, thing for the parents to fill out kind of on the first day and it was, it was just asking questions about the kids and kind of what you do at home or things things that the teacher could know that might help them. So when Georgia starts to get upset, we take some deep breaths and try and calm ourselves down. And so she said that that's what they've been, been trying to do. So hopefully, hopefully she had a bit of a better day today. 
Um, hopefully she remembers to eat. So that's, that's usually what happens is she's just hungry and then she gets super hangry. <laughs> like, eat your lunch, you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, and so I, I, I have all this kind of time now and I feel like there's a lot to do and also like, I don't know, it's been it's been weird. I think it's gonna take me a little a, a while to adjust for sure. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I didn't cry on the first day, but I totally <laughs> came when we when we the first day was like just an hour long, and Justin and I came with her, and it was all these different stations, and basically just to like see where the kids were at, kind of, and we were just supposed to like step back and let them do their thing which we did and so she was playing with kinetic sand or something and so one of the mums was like taught or not one of the mums but one of the the ladies who was doing she wasn't one of the teachers but somebody who worked at the school was facilitating this little station and so she was talking to me about like or she was talking to us about you know if we work or whatever and after I said like I work from home and she's like, oh, so this is going to be a big change for you. And so we were like talking about that a little bit. And then I totally just like, I didn't fall, but I was just like, hey, I'm going to go stand over here now. <laughs> it was, yeah. But that was, that was the only time I was like close. Because <laughs> it is, it's a big change. Like you have this little buddy, this little friend who like follows you around everywhere. And then they die. And then they stop following you around everywhere. Oh, kids growing up. <laughs> um, the other big life thing that's kind of been happening over the summer is for the past five years, um, <laughs> Justin and I have really wanted to, um, we live in a, in a condo, it's a nice place. Um, it's owned by my mom, so we have a great landlord, uh, but it's quite small and just not, a, just not a great place for our lifestyles. Um, Justin especially has a really tough time here and you know we'd like to have a yard for Georgia and things like that so we've been uh, trying to find a house a couple years ago we were like a day away from signing papers on a house <laughs> in hope and then we didn't uh, but the past two years it's been like out of the question it's been I don't know if you know anything about what's been happening in like Vancouver land real estate uh, it's ridiculous. Like, it's actually just crazy. So that got put on hold for three years. <laughs> and we've been saving and like doing our thing, but I mean, it has not been like great. But now, um, like I still, during those three years, I look at the, the houses that are for sale and see what's what's happening and whatever. And now it looks like things in Hope are finally starting to come back into our price range. Um, so that's very exciting. We went to the bank and we just, you know, we talked to them about what we can, what we can afford and what we want and, and things like that. So now we have like, we have a number and that we're comfortable with and things are starting to come down a little bit so hopefully hopefully sometime very soon um, we'll be able to leave this condo <laughs> we won't be staying in Abbotsford because for the, like the it's crazy and even if I was like even if I was working while Georgia wasn't in school um, like if I had an out job outside of a pip and pin daycare and like the costs of it wouldn't have evened out like it wouldn't have made any sense because for you know what an extra hundred two hundred dollars a month we would have the extra stress of you know daycare and things like that so we were just like no nah. <laughs> um what else is going on i baked muffins they were delicious <laughs> and I have a lot of time <laughs> feels like a lot of time I'm sure in in a week or two it won't feel like a lot of time we'll be like ah where did all this you know 
I have to go pick up Georgia from school already and kind of thing, which I almost do in like an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, so make sure that you enter the giveaway. So down below, tell me what your favorite thing about the summer was. Uh, probably my favorite thing. Ooh, I have two favorites. Okay, our, Justin and I went up to Lumby, which was really fun and really nice. Um, to visit some friends and that was very awesome but we did that without Georgia um, but Georgia stayed at, at her grandparents house that weekend and then my other favorite thing was at the very very like last week of summer was um, a real like it was really hot and Katie came to visit she was here for like five weeks which was really cool with with the family and so the kids got together lots and things like that um, but they're a little bit younger still so Bjorn had naps and things and and just different kind of different schedules um, so like a day at the beach wasn't really possible with with Katie and the boys because they're just they weren't able to do all day at the beach kind of thing could do an hour or two but anyways one of my favorite days with Georgia was we went early in the morning after her, you know, little morning summer camp thing. We went to the beach, me and her, spent the whole day there. <laughs> she had so much fun. She made friends and like jumped off the dock and no, it was great. Um, that, was a, that was a really fun, fun day. Oh, and then Katie and I also, we went to, um, for my birthday, she got me a tarot card reading and my birthday was way back in April. And so I was like, well, why don't we wait? Like, why don't I wait to do it until you're here? And then we can go and do it and have a girl's day. And so me and her and Georgia, we went out to Vancouver and um, what's, what's it called? I can't remember, it's in Gastown. It's a place in Gastown. And we, we had our tarot cards read and um, that was really, really fun. And she says we need to get out of our house too. Because <laughs> it's bringing us down. <laughs> yeah, that's very accurate. Um, yeah, so tell me what your favorite thing about the summer was and I'll draw the winner the next week or two. Um, check out the 88 Stitches Ravelry page for all the information about the Prism Pin Knit Along. Um, November 9th, I will be there for a trunk show. And October 4th and 5th, I will be in Vancouver at the Peony Forum for Knit City, which is like three weeks away. We still don't have our books printed. That is it for today. And um, hopefully next week, I'll have another episode for you. Thanks for coming back. And thanks for joining me. Make sure you like this video and subscribe so that um, I can make some more. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Have a good week.